You're either going to love this or hate this. Let's talk about why the Model 3 is possibly the most futuristic, mind-blowing car on the market right now. So back in August, a Tesla Motors Club forum member wrote this really interesting article about this Model 3 theory that I want to explain in this video today and what it means for us car owners going forward into the future. I'll leave a link to that article in the description below if you want to check it out yourself. So just last week, Tesla probably had their best event ever when they announced the Semi and the second generation Roadster. Now, as expected, since these are two very cool new products, Elon seemed happy and excited and energetic during this event. If you compare that to how the Model 3 event happened, uh, the Model 3 event was probably their least climactic event. It was just it was it was very short and some parts were just a bit awkward. And I think Elon was going through some tough personal times at that time. And it was just kind of a weird event. So why was that? Well, basically because that Tesla Model 3 event was the anti sell. Tesla does not want you to buy a Model 3 yet. So here's why. First, the Osborne effect. Tesla does not want you, the customer, to think that the Model 3 is their best car available right now just because it's their latest edition. Even though the Model 3 does have some newer technology in it compared to last year's Model S and Model X, which are basically double the price. The second reason is Tesla doesn't want to sell any more Model 3s right now because there have been over 450,000 pre-orders of the Model 3, which hugely exceeded their expectations. So they have a huge backlog on their hands and they're in production hell. Welcome to production hell. And that's why they don't want to sell any more Model 3s because they'd rather sell a more expensive Model S or Model X in the meantime because they can produce those right now and deliver those right now and make an instant profit. And if you look at the official Model 3 page on Tesla's website, it's pretty obvious they're trying to sell you a Model S instead of the Model 3. So that is the anti-sell. Now let's talk about that newer technology in the Model 3. This new technology is referred to as Autopilot Hardware 2.5, and its purpose is to provide more computing power for future autonomous driving. Tesla tried to downplay this by saying the internal name Hardware 2.5 is an overstatement, and instead it should be called something more like Hardware 2.1. This hardware set has some added computing and wiring redundancy, which very slightly improves reliability, but it does not have an additional Pascal GPU. Now, starting in July or August of 2017, all Tesla cars, the Model 3, the Model S, and the Model X, they all have hardware 2.5. And Tesla has said that any previous car with hardware 2.0 that is somehow not capable of that full self-driving feature, Tesla will upgrade that car for free as long as that customer has already paid for that full self-driving. Now, having said that, Tesla does still believe that the hardware 2.0 cars will be capable of full self-driving. So why the upgrade to 2.5? Well, that brings us to the Tesla network, and this is the Tesla ride-sharing platform that's still in the works. It's going to be coming in the future sometime, but essentially this is just like Uber and Lyft, except with Tesla, it's going to be fully autonomous ride-sharing. So the car will be driving itself. It will be picking up passengers by itself, taking them to their destinations without the owner having to be in the car and driving. So here's an excerpt from the Tesla master plan. When true self-driving is approved by regulators, it will mean that you will be able to summon your Tesla from pretty much anywhere. Once it picks you up, you'll be able to sleep, read, or do anything else en route to your destination. You will also be able to add your car to the Tesla shared fleet just by tapping a button on the Tesla phone app and have it generate income for you while you're at work or on vacation, significantly offsetting, and at times potentially exceeding the monthly loan or lease cost. So what's the big secret? Well, currently the Tesla Model 3 is the only Tesla vehicle that's capable of joining that ride-sharing network. Here's why. First, the interior. The minimalistic interior is one of the most polarizing features of the Model 3. Some people love it, like me, while others hate it. And let's not forget that touchscreen. Some people are just infuriated that almost everything in the Model 3 is controlled through that 15-inch touch display. I mean almost everything, from opening the glove box to setting the direction of the air vents to opening the trunk. It's all software-based controls on the touchscreen. So why is that? It's because it needs to be for the ride-sharing network. Uh, if everything is software controlled, that means you can customize every single setting and it will remember that setting, but not only will it remember that setting, it will remember the setting based on who's using the car. So the Model 3 answers the two biggest concerns when it comes to autonomous ride-sharing. First, what if someone steals my valuables? And second, what if somebody damages my car? The first issue is through the software control. So if you don't want somebody to have access to your trunk or glove box, you can set it to where they don't have access. So what about the damage to your car? Well, that's where the new hardware in the Model 3 comes into play. The Model 3 has something that the Model S and the Model X currently do not have, and that's an interior camera. It's built into the rear view mirror and it can see who's in the car at any given time and monitor what's happening inside the car. But with an added interior camera, how is the car gonna be able to process all that extra data? Well, remember the hardware 2.5? Remember when Tesla said it has added computing and wiring redundancy? There you go. 
So the Model 3 solves both of the biggest concerns about autonomous ride sharing, but there is still one more piece left to the puzzle, the entry. The Model 3 does not come with a traditional car key, nor does it come with a key fob that you're used to seeing in the later vehicles. Instead, it comes with an NFC key card that you can use it to unlock the car and start the car. But that's just the backup method. The real method of entry and starting of the car is through a smartphone. With the Tesla app and Bluetooth Low Energy, it sends an encrypted signal to the Model 3 as you get near it. So in theory, when you have your smartphone in your pocket and walk up to the Model 3, it will unlock and start when you get in. But not only will it do that, it will also know exactly who is getting in the car and it will set the car settings based on who the person is. So to recap, the Model 3 has brand new autopilot hardware, has a brand new interior camera, it's fully software controlled, and it has entry via a smartphone. So what does that mean? It means the Model 3 is not just another mass market electric vehicle. It's not even just about the fact that it could potentially drive itself. The Model 3 is the first ever car to be designed for autonomous ride sharing. Tesla is trying to downplay the significance of the Model 3, for now at least, because they are still in production hell, but there's no denying that the Model 3 is one of, if not the most technologically advanced car to be built. Of course, autonomous ride sharing is entirely dependent on whether or not the Model 3 will even be capable of full self-driving if and when it is made legal, but this is from Elon himself. There will be a shared autonomy fleet where you buy your car and you can choose to use that car exclusively. You can choose to have it used only by friends or family or other drivers who are rated five stars. You can choose to share it sometimes, but not other times. That's 100% what will occur. It's just a question of when. So there you go. Elon plans to do it. He promises a lot of things. Most of the things he does make a possibility, but do you think this is going to be a possibility? Do you think the Model 3 was built for autonomous ride sharing? Do you think the Tesla network is even going to be a thing? Is it even gonna be a, a possibility within the next five or 10 years? When do you think it's gonna happen? I'm curious to see what you have to say about this. Thank you for watching. My name is Andy. If you wanna see that link to the article, the original article that this video is based on, I will leave it in the description below. And thanks to uh, all the people in the TMC forums, uh, that interact and share information about Tesla because it is one of my favorite companies right now. And uh, Elon is one of my idols and I can't wait to get my Model 3 again. If you want to see that Model 3 review when I get mine, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you want to check out my other Mo Model 3 videos and Tesla videos, I will leave the links up here as well. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.